Hey girl, how you doing? Hi. 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 I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Just enjoying uh, Jamaica. <laughs> hey, listen, I know we have a disagreement. We'll see what happens. Hey girl, how you doing? Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm good. good. I'm good. Just enjoying uh, Jamaica. <laughs> hey, listen, I know we have a disagreement, but I'm genuine when I say I don't want to fuck up your trip. <laughs> like, I really, that's why I wanted no, to say, I'm like, are you sure you want to see? Honestly, it's perfectly fine. We've got about forty-five minutes before the evening entertainment starts, so we're okay. just um, guys in bed right now. I don't know if you can see him, uh, hey. but we're just chilling at the moment. So I'm free to talk for about forty-five minutes. Perfect. And before, and I'll, I'll let you have the floor, but before we get begin, and I'm saying this genuinely, I like you and I very much respect you. So please understand, okay. I'm not, I'm not one of those people that's going to be passive aggressive shady. I call that like a, a baby boomer, like Peter. I don't do that shit. I'm at the point where since I've come back, I'm even more direct as possible, but understand everything I'm saying, I do respect you and I like you. A lot of these motherfuckers I can't stand. I actually like you. I'm just very irritated. So like, and I know I said, okay. so I wanted to start out with that. Okay, so let me just preface this from the outset um, to begin by saying that I've had personal run-ins with Peter Mon. I'm not his biggest fan. Right on. It's not like I would have been running to defend him in this video. I actually filmed a video, got ready to upload it, but then he put his video out where he did a proper apology, what I would consider a proper apology. Okay. And I thought... Do you know what? What's more important, me putting out these videos and getting my views and making some money or leaving this situation be because he's done the right thing? And that's what I decided to do. I thought, right now is not the right time. I'm not the biggest Peter Mon fan. I am, will always be eternally grateful for the things he's done for me in the past. But because of my own personal run-ins with him, I am not his biggest fan right now. Right on. So because of that, it was never, the video that I had already filmed was never going to be a glowing, amazing Peter Mon review. But I acknowledge that right is right and wrong is wrong. His original apology was bullshit. And I'll say that straight up. It was complete and utter bullshit. But the second apology was correct. And sometimes some people need a bit of a chance to get to, to understand the hypocrisy, to understand their own ego and think, you know what, I need to put that aside and speak to the people that I've genuinely hurt over this situation. I feel that he did that, so there was no more argument for me. That's the only reason that I haven't made a video. Well, let me, and if it's okay, I'll, I'll jump in there. And by the way, sometimes I can interrupt, like tell, like tell me, I'm not meaning to be rude. It's just a, a tick of mine sometimes. So here's where I'm frustrated. And first of all, I didn't know until you told me you're on your vacation. So it makes yeah, right. That alone, I would understand why you're not jumping up to do shit, aside from everything else. So forgive me, didn't know. Oh, shit, it's frozen. Oh, if you frozen, can you see me? No, I can hear you, though. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, sorry, okay, I'm good. in regular, but signal might be shit. What's that? Okay, I'll here. okay I think it's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can kind of hear. Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Okay, so I'll, uh, just uh, uh, try to make some noise or uh, like let, leave me a comment. Let me know if you can't hear me. I'll, I'll, I'll give my point and where I'm frustrated. So like I said, I apologize. Didn't know you're on vacation. Like I wouldn't be jumping to do shit. <laughs> so just yeah. first of all, you know, life happens. You don't know. And this isn't me kissing your ass. I'm just telling like I didn't know. So I think here's where I'm frustrated. What we've seen with Peter is Peter knew the tweets were out there. He never removed them. He never told his audience this is who he was. Now, I'm the kind of person I wouldn't be mad. Like we've all said dumb shit. All of us. Yeah, Almost, agreed. you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and act like I haven't said any dumb shit, even before people have, you know, gotten upset with me. All of us have said dumb shit. I'm more than forgiving on that. What I'm frustrated with, Paige, is the hypocrisy. This motherfucker came so hard at me about what a racist I am and my white privilege. When I did videos crying, saying, look, we might have different opinions, but if anybody got hurt because they didn't understand me or my context, I'm sorry. I said that repeatedly. I've still said it repeatedly. What frustrates me about Peter is, this is like, Peter's been hiding this. He's been, and not just the inward shit, which to me, that's enough on its own. Here's the big thing nobody's talking about. This motherfucker, he's, he was a counselor putting out shit between him and his clients. Putting out shit between him and his clients. He's talking about people being ugly. He's be saying stuff that from, I'm going to talk about his standard, are homophobic. There's a lot that's wrong with those tweets. 
I said one long, sarcastic, joking stream of consciousness because I was frustrated that people had already been calling me racist. I was already frustrated with that. And everybody lost their minds. Peter said several things and hid it while policing how everybody else should be in talk. Like he said stuff like, I made him embarrassed to be white. I never said the N word though. And so, do you see where I'm coming from? That's where I'm frustrated. That's, and then even the first apology seemed like complete bullshit, where with me, I've always been real with people. I said, look, I'm not gonna apologize for a joke people either didn't understand or they didn't know me, but I will apologize if you got hurt because it wasn't my intention. Nothing, there was no racist intention, there was no intention to hurt you, buddy. But I feel like the internet is gonna give him a pass. And again, you're on vacation, who gives a fuck? Like, go on vacation, I didn't know. But I'm saying to everybody else, that's what pisses me off is watching that hypocrisy. So that's where I'm coming from. Um, I think to a certain degree that I agree that there is a level of hypocrisy within the drama community. I think there's certain situations that people won't talk about. There's certain people that people won't talk about because they are the most popular people at the time. I get that. I see that all the time. And I'm like, really? We're not, we're not clocking this person. So I get that 100%. Amen. Thank um, you. I can't say that I've seen his previous videos on of you. So I can't really speak on that until I have a look personally myself, which I will do. But, but what I can say is I remember some time ago, because I think he was very, very angry with you at the time. Um, and I think some time ago, it was in his captured moments on you now, but probably like about a year ago now. Um, but on there, he was saying something to the effect of, this is one of the several runnings that I've had with this man. Um, it said, he said something along the lines of, um, I'm upset that Paige even allowed Joy on her platform. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, okay. okay, cool, right. So um, when I heard that, obviously I took a defensive stand by because I, as far as I'm concerned, as long as somebody is able to proficiently apologize, then fair enough. I'm gonna be honest with you, Joy, your apology to me wasn't good enough. And it's just my personal perspective. That's fine. There could be a bunch of people who completely are fine with it. But to me, I feel like apologies need to be a sit down video where you address something. You do not make any ifs or buts, whether it was racially aggravated or intended. I always believe that impact over and every single time. If somebody else is upset with it, then you need to at least acknowledge that because by not acknowledging that, then you're not acknowledging that person or that mar marginalized group's feelings. That's and, why I personally feel that you haven't done the best apology. And well, with I think Peter, I'm ready to let that go because he's apologized properly. Because in that first video that I recorded today, well, yesterday, that I was editing today, I was going in at Aim and saying, this is not acceptable. And just because you, you know, say it's all in the past doesn't mean that everybody has to forget it. You have to apologize correctly. You have to put your tweets up one by one and discuss in order what happened so that you can say, let this be a teachable moment. Don't do Let me ask this. Let me respond with this. Did you see all the videos where I talked about it? Because I had one where I broke down and cried and I said, I am genuinely sorry if anybody got hurt because it wasn't my intention. Now here's, here's, and you understand being on YouTube and this took me a while to fully get, especially because at that time I was really sick and I'm not saying I'm not at all blaming anything on being sick, but it fucked with my cognitive abilities. I talked about that a lot. And what would happen is people would demand to know why I did something and what led up to it. So then I would say it, but if I said that you're giving an excuse, it was literally in my situation. I'm damned if I do, I'm damned if I don't. So I explained to people, look, I'm not going to apologize for humor because I'm somebody that believes in free speech and I believe that we have the right to bring light out of darkness. Where my issue was is that, and this is stuff you don't know about, so I'm not mad at you. Lady Thriller had been threatening to take down my channel long before this shit came out. She said, I'm gonna find a way. I have the tweets somewhere where she deleted. She said, I'm reporting everyone. Yeah, no, I saw them, I saw them. Right, so it went back that far. She was already gonna try to spin this in a certain way. So what happened with me is, it took me a little bit to understand a lot of people don't know me and don't know my humor and how everything was edited and nobody give the, a, a lot of people, I'm not saying you, but I'm saying how it got around, didn't get the context when she tried to spread this message. What upset me was that I tried to do what everybody was asking me to do. So I apologized if I hurt people, I said my truth and I also explained what was going on. 
But what's frustrating but, can I just be honest, is that the same situation happened, obviously, with Jeffree Star, we've seen, uh, where he had a racist past and all that kind of stuff. And he did apologise about it on Twitter. He apologised about it on Snapchat. He even apologised about it on Instagram. But it wasn't until he made a formal apology video where he sat down and owned his shit fully on a, on a forum that everybody could get to, that everybody would be able to see. Only then did people start to actually accept his apology personally for me live streams you could say sorry until the cows come home if i've not I did that on videos I, I did that on videos i cried and said i'm sorry if you got hurt but i also stood by what i believe in which is still what i believe in that what i said was not intended to be racist what i said i was being sarcastic from people calling me racist. it's almost like if somebody said you're racist and i was like oh yeah i want to kill everybody like that's my kind of humor and what i was trying to say was i'm not going to apologize for the way i humor is how i process the world the way i process and for humor for trying to be humorous and for saying a sarcastic comment what i will be sorry for is if anybody got hurt from it because people manipulated it and they didn't understand the context or people just saw it and didn't know me. I apologized if anybody could have gotten hurt for that and said repeatedly, I love everybody. I'm not a racist. I cried. So my thing is, why is it when that first apology, he tried to just, it's so apparent. He tried to sweep it under the rug. This is stuff he's been hiding while he polices everybody else. Well, why is it it's okay to give him a pass on his second video, but when I cry and I'm honest, I own my shit, I own my truth and I apologize, it's looked at as not as good that's where my frustration is well i've not seen the crime video if i'm perfectly honest but also just as a complete disclaimer as we've seen with like laura lee and all that cut stuff going on crying does not change the impact of the words that anybody said so i need to see that video for myself if you've got a version of that send it to me my and channel's when we reconvene in okay. like two weeks time then Let's obviously i can give my opinion properly bitch let's i'm down i'm down get my channel's deleted but i have it saved somewhere so i will um i will have to find those and send those to you. and i'm not saying crying means you're sorry but i think there's a difference between being genuine and being not genuine and i think let me tell you where i think it, to me, this is my perspective where I think you can tell I'm being genuine because I've never strayed from my message. Where with Peter, he just wanted to sweep it under the rug really quick and move on. Didn't want to address the tweets. And it wasn't just the N-word. To me, the N-word's disgusting enough. That shit's disgust. Fuck everything else. But then the rest of it, the rest of it that's there, there's so much awful shit. When I got drugged for this one instance of venting sarcastically because people were calling me racist, these group of people that harassed me, which I don't know if you know about this, but I've had these group of about 40 to 50 harassers for the last year and a half. I left YouTube, they didn't stop. They didn't stop and Peter fed that, which is why I'm frustrated. But I was trying, sorry, my, my point was to say, to me, I agree, it doesn't matter if you were crying, but I've been genuine and that I never strayed from my message. My message has been, I'm sorry if you got hurt, if there was a miscommunication and people understanding my humor. But I'm not a racist, and I still but, I'm not sorry in, for talking. Um, just in honesty, though, it, the way that I'm seeing it right now is that the issue that you have right now is the fact that Peter is being let off by majority by a lot of people. Yes. I don't think it's specifically targeting myself, if that makes any sense. No, no, no. And, and I, I, yes. The way you came across on Twitter was almost as if I was being a hypocrite for interviewing uh, you, but not interviewing him. I've got nothing to say now because he's rectified the situation. If you're going thing. based on the first original video, by all means, call me a hypocrite if I'm not going out of my way to interview him as well. And I would have probably agreed with you. But because of that second apology, for me, there's no point in me interviewing him. He's only going to say the same things he said in that second apology. So here's here's my thing, though. This, this is what I would encourage you to do. Um, and I'll find it. If you need me to send it to you, I'll send the videos where he's t he's saying stuff like he's embarrassed to be white because of me. Like all the videos where he is just outright trying to slam me and what a horrible racist and piece of crap I am. And then he goes and does stuff like this. To me, it's not about whether or not he's sorry. It's all the damage, all the shit he has talked about. So many other people policing them for their racism when he knew he was hiding this. And to me, if you've been hiding this while screaming at everybody else, how do we know you're sorry? How do we, and that, that's my question. I don't know, I don't know necessarily if he's hiding it. I do personally think it is suspect that he has deleted it since, because I would much rather they be available for people to view, and he used that as a teachable moment, rather than for them to be disappeared. It's very, I'm gonna be honest, reminiscent of the whole Jeff 
uh, uh, John Cookian versus him situation that happened in December, where he deleted his entire Tumblr. For me, it's just kind of like, it makes people think that you have something to hide. And if you don't have anything to hide, then you shouldn't have deleted anything because that should be a recognized part of your past that makes you turn into the person that you are today. That's how I personally feel about it. But in terms of him hiding it, like he knew he had these tweets all these years. I don't believe he even knew they were available. I don't even think he knew he even said those things because I'm sure if we went back into my Facebook history, I never used to have a Twitter before, but um, if we went back into my Facebook history, I've said some horrible things, horrible things. Absolutely. I was the Great. most militant black person you would ever meet in your whole entire life. Understood. So for myself, I know for a fact I've said some gross things. I agree. If any of them should come to light, even if they come to light tomorrow, I wouldn't be able to find them because you can't look in chronological order on Facebook. But um, if any of those tweets were ever to come to light or come, I'm ready for that because I know that those those messages, sorry, Facebook posts that I made in the past, they're a part of who I am now. If I weren't raged and riddled with black anger, all those years ago, I definitely would not be the more even person that I am today. Understood. But that is a part of remaining teachable. I think, personally speaking, my personal perspective is Peter has a long way to go, but at this point, he's made the right steps, and I cannot discredit somebody for making the right steps and for putting their ego aside for one moment and saying, I was a hypocrite, I knew I was wrong, and I apologize. Now, here's the difference I see between you and Peter. You own that's who you used to be. Now, I've not seen a lot of your content. That's not a diss. I mean, we just we don't all sit and watch each other. Like, you wouldn't watch all my yeah. 500 videos. I wouldn't expect you to, right? But, like, you've talked about your past. You've talked about what's made you that person. Here's where I'm frustrated. is what I've seen from him, he hasn't. And he's been calling everybody else, me included, the, the worst fucking racist and white privilege. And he's so embarrassed to be white because of me and other people and never talked about this stuff. And that to me is where I see that it's problematic. I have no problem, even if to somebody I don't like. I don't like Peter because the shit he said to me and his passive aggressive bullshit, right? I'm open about that. But my issue isn't about a lack of forgiveness if he's sorry. It's about the blatant hypocrisy of how dare you go police. You're a white man going and policing everybody else when look at the skeletons you've been hiding and your first apology, you were just trying to get rid of it. You didn't, he didn't want to go over the tweets. And that's no, where to I me- get that and I agree on that first apology, he definitely was like, I'm going to sweep this under the rug because I was like, um, excuse me, no, you're not. Because that was why I was making my original video. But the second video, I feel like he owned it, personally speaking. I think you're, you're going on the premise that he knew he made these nasty tweets in the past and that he knew about them and still make it right with everybody. Privilege. And he's so embarrassed to be white because of me and other people and never talked about this stuff. And that, to me, is where I see that it's problematic. I have no problem, even if to somebody I don't like. I don't like Peter because the shit he said to me and his passive aggressive bullshit, right? I'm open about that. But my issue isn't about a lack of forgiveness if he's sorry. It's about the blatant hypocrisy of how dare you go police. You're a white man going and policing everybody else when look at the skeletons you've been hiding and your first apology, you were just trying to get rid of it. You didn't, he didn't want to go over the tweets. And that's no, where to I me- No, I that and I agree on that first apology. He definitely was like, I'm going to sweep this under the rug because I was like, um, excuse me, no, you're not. Because that was why I was making my original video. But the second video, I feel like he owned it, personally speaking. I think you're, you're going on the premise that he knew he made these nasty tweets in the past and that he knew about them and still policed everybody else. Well, my, my thing is that he did those tweets. Is I'm going on the premise of his words, okay. uh, which is that he didn't know that they were there. And that's all I can go on because I can't vouch for somebody's, you know, mind. Well, let me, let me say this. To me, if he made the tweets, then that's the kind of language he used. He even looked, he's, even in his apology videos and stuff, he said he had to ask friends, am I still that person? Like there are certain to me, psychologically, in, in analyzing what he said, there are certain tells, and I'll have to go through it because I, I haven't made my video yet on it, but that show me he knew this stuff was there. I would have no issue had he not been policing other people. My issue is you had this shit in your closet and you're policing other people. 
Where's the apology to me and everybody else that you've tried to out as a racist? Where's your apology for mocking everybody else's apology videos and you mock that people have to do it twice to get it right? Where's your apology for the fact that you told me I need to leave YouTube set for several days to get my mind clear? He hasn't left it at all. That's the stuff, if that makes sense, that's the stuff I'm upset about. And there's so there are too many suspect things that I feel like he should be called out more. And I'm just scared it's going to be swept under the rug. That's what I'm scared of. But the point is, and I'm just speaking from a drama channel perspective, is that none of us are perfect and all of us have made mistakes and all of us have done bad things. Do you know what I mean? So from my perspective, it's like I'm not allowed to critique or ever give commentary because I had bad things that's happened in my past. I've made bad decisions. Do you know what I mean? I kind of feel like there needs to be kind of some leeway in terms of us being allowed to make mistakes as well because we're just as human as the rest of the influencers that we talk about. Yes, except, here's my exception, he damaged people. He damages channels with his bullshit and his spreading how everybody else is racist when he's got the skeletons in his closet. To me, it's not done until he apologizes for being hypocritical and calling out other people that are racist. And from my perspective, he doesn't he ever- He did say, though, in his second video that he apologizes for being a hypocrite and he realizes he probably is hypocritical for the things that he said in the past. He did say that. He didn't detail and oh, say the for the things I've said about Elijah Daniel or Tana Merger or um, Joy Sparkles. He hasn't said that specifically, but he did address that. And I, but I think he needs to address certain YouTubers about it. Like Tana Mojo, she said the N-word. I get it. Like that one, I, there are certain people I get. With me, I said a sarcastic comment based off of I was pissed that people were calling me racist. Probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, but I did it. I own it. I've owned every ounce of it. I've owned where I stand on it. And he still came for me. I feel like until he really apologizes to the people and the channels he hurt by his own hypocrisy and by misleading his audience because this is what this is where I'm upset I don't know how much you know about this and I know you have to go so I don't take up too much of your time yeah. and not that in the skeptic community they all came together and they had this big event called Kilroy and I don't know if you've ever heard of this the big free speech event that was trying to rile you rival YouTube they are a bunch of pussy hypocritical little assholes and what ended up happening was these people ran away stealing tens of thousands of dollars. So here's where I'm coming from. When I see stuff like watching Peter Mon try to be incredibly incriminating and damaging to other people and scream what racist they are when we see what he's been hiding in his closet until he makes a personal apology to me and the others he's policed while he's been worse than me and other people, that's where I'm not going to let it rest. Because I feel like if you've done damage with your hypocrisy, you need to fix it. Otherwise, this is just damage control. Because you don't care who you've hurt. And if you don't care who you've hurt, you don't care if you've hurt your audience. You don't care if you've hurt everybody else. To me, that just shows me this is fake. That's just where I'm coming from. Right. Okay. But then that in that respect, if I was ever to make a similar mistake to any other uh, beauty guru that I've policed, on various different subjects say i don't know i didn't post an affiliate link or something so say if i got dragged for that i would then have to not only apologize for the thing it is that i done but also apologize to all of the beauty gurus that i've schooled on that it if just you it doesn't it doesn't negate weren't... the situation of right is right and wrong is wrong so what you're and sorry you cut out in some of that so like the first part so stop me if i'm not i'm trying to piece it together because the first part cut out Again, my issue is you've been open about your past. He hasn't. And when he schools other people after what his past is, and from my perspective, trying to hide that and done damage to other channels until he tries to make it right with everybody, I don't trust what he has to say. And I don't trust that he actually cares about what he's saying. That's where I'm coming from with it. Um, I think to a certain degree, I agree, but I don't believe that he should have to apologize to every single person that he's policed because at the end of the day, he's entitled to his opinion. He's entitled to speak about whatever it is that he wants to speak yes. about. If yes. he's a hypocrite, then fine. But at the same time, everybody still has the opportunity to subscribe and subscribe to him if they now feel that he's a hypocrite. That's completely fine. I don't know if he needs to go to you, needs to go to Tana, needs to go to Elijah, needs to go to Kathleen Lights, that uh, Kevin guy that he talked about racist past tweets about as well. 
and all the other people, Gabriel Zamora, I don't think he needs to go to every single person and say, I'm sorry because now it's me, because then that's saying that it's okay now because I did the same thing. To me, I, I, mean? I don't want that's an apology. Right, wrong is sure. wrong. I don't want an apology for him. Say, like what, what I, the, here's where my, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an apology of, I'm sorry, I was a hypocrite and I damaged your channel when I was doing the same thing. Cause from my perspective page, and this is what I said, in, you know, in the last live stream, I don't know how much you were saw. Sometimes, you know, people, when they get it to you, it's a shitty game of telephone, but this is what I was saying. I said, you know, however you want to look at it, I'll use the terms that you're comfortable with because I respect you and you're on, you're, you're in my house right now. So people of color, have so many fucking issues that need to be addressed across the board. I mean, and I was, I was going into even Native Americans. Like, we need to be there and help. We all need to be helping each other. But here's the thing. When you, to me, my perspective is when you see a white man screaming how everybody else is racist, hiding that shit in his closet, from my perspective, it just puts a black eye on what people of color are trying to get done when they're doing it the right way. And that's part of my frustration. It's like, well, shit, you're putting down the movement you say you care about so much when you're doing this kind of behavior. But in, in honesty, if I hear somebody who has had that experience, who has used those words, who has been filled with that anger and aggression towards whatever marginalized community it is that he's talking about, I would more, I would be more inclined, this is just a personal perspective, but I would be more inclined to listen to somebody who has those experiences because I could say that, you know what? He used to be like this, but he's this person now. And you know what? He's got some really good points and he's got some life experiences that I can learn from. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We all have skeletons in our closet. I would be absolutely lying if I said that everything that I have ever done in my life, in my past, in my history, is on the internet for public consumption. Sometimes we just don't want that information to be out there. But when it does come out, we need to do the right thing. And part, I believe part of doing the right thing is making amends with the people and the channels you've individually damaged. This is how I live my truth. This is what I try to do. I've done, people have seen me do this on my channel. And to me, until he tries to make it right with everybody that he can, from all the things I've seen, I don't take his apologies as genuine. He wanted to police and tell me I wasn't genuine. And that's fine. He has a right to do that. But now when I see his crap come out of the woodwork and I see who he really has been that he's hiding, to me, it's not going to be right until he tries to make it right with everybody. Everybody. That's just my opinion. If you don't try to make it right with everybody that you can, then I feel like we can't trust that you're really sorry. This just looks like a PR stunt. That's where I'm coming from. Well, it, probably, to be honest, I think when people make these kind of public apologies, they're all PR stunts, whether we like them or not. Um, I've had to make a public apology for saying something inappropriate to a minor at one point. Um, I was in a live stream. I said something that now reflecting back on it, I probably... shouldn't have said um i discussed it with his parents i was really sorry i apologized not only to him his mother but also the, the people who were actually involved that i really should have apologized to but also to the internet for saying this crap i made it right with those particular human beings but this situation is surrounding peter and his tweets so as far as i'm concerned all the other people surrounding it all the other influences it is that he's spoken about it I'm gonna have to agree to disagree with you here. He doesn't have to apologize to nobody. And I and I, I respect that you disagree. And to me, until if he was genuine about caring about his audience, about caring about doing the right thing, he would try to do a right thing across the board, not just when it makes him look good. And right now, I feel like what we're seeing is just doing something when it makes him look good. I'm not saying he's not sorry. I don't know, but I can't trust him until I really see him try to do the right thing across the board. That's where I'm coming from. To me, you can't be selective with doing the right thing. Otherwise, how can we trust it? Yeah, I feel that. I feel that completely. And I think, personally speaking, in other areas of um, his drama channel and things that he said that I've looked back on and thought, hmm, that's a bit hypocritical because you said this this week. I, I, I feel that sometimes as well with his channel. But at yeah. times, I have to sit here and say right is right, wrong is wrong. He did the right thing. He was wrong previously. But personally, if I'm willing to sit down and watch 
Jeffree Star make an apology video and say, do you know what? I'm going to leave that in the past. How it would be very hypocritical of me to have somebody do a correct apology that I've outlined in my channel several times, which is the right way to make a public apology and not forgive this individual for the things that they said in the past, because then it's a personal vendetta that I have against the individual. And although me and Peter have never eye to eye all the time, I'm not going to hold one situation against him for the rest of his life. And I don't think, and I'm not saying that we should hold it against him for the rest of his life. But again, I'm saying that I think when you want to do the right thing, you can't, like I was saying about the outrage culture, you can't pick and choose. And in my perspective, you can't pick and choose as well with Peter. He's got to try, attempt to make it right across the board, because if he doesn't, it's just a PR stunt. Because, and that's the other thing, it's not just this. He's been hypocritical about so many things. And if he tried to do so much damage to my channel by just, he, he just ripped me up one side and down the other for all my apologies apologies and so many other things about me. So how can we really know if he's sorry? And my thing is with, with you, and this is where I was frustrated, and again, I think the shitty game of telephone gets played, but I will say this. I will say because of the, some of the things I'm telling you, which I'll send you evidence of so you can see, and because I got called out so harshly, I just feel that you should call other people out just as harshly because it wasn't just the N-word girl. He said so much crap. And I know, I've you. seen, I've gone on to Guru Gossip, I had a little gander for myself, so I've definitely seen the things that have come out of his mouth. So I acknowledge that for this situation, I'm willing to let it go. If, the, if you're not willing to let it go, that is completely your prerogative. And you can message him, you can grill him personally, you can have him on your stream and, you know, chop it up with him, but... I kind of feel like this is somewhat, not to be rude or disrespectful, uh, misdirected anger because I'm not the person you've got a problem with. I, I, I want to say it's, it's, let me say this. It is frustrating because, it, like I said, it feels like it is selective outrage. If to me, if you're not going to call him out and hold him to the same standard that you tried to hold me to, it does feel hypocritical. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm just trying to, I'm just going to be real with you. I'd rather do that than play the passive aggressive shit on YouTube because I want to try, I want to be the person that I am in real life, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, um, I'll have to just re like respectfully disagree on that. But I, I don't mean to be rude, but I do have to go, go. now. So, you gotta go. Um, you. Thank you for speaking to me. Whatever. Um, have a good evening or day, whatever the fuck it is that you're doing. <laughs> okay, right on. I'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Take care.